Greetings AP Calculating students. Welcome to our final video in topic 10.1. And in this particular video, if you would like to follow along the correct way, you're going to need your graphing calculator. And this video is meant for students who are using a TI inspired graphing calculator. If you're watching this outside of Avon, you can still follow along and see some of the capabilities that the Inspire has. But the actual procedure in order to do the things that I will do in this video for the TI-84 very different. And my hope is to make a video for TI-84 users in the near future. And you can find that on my YouTube channel. So let's take a look at a sequence versus a series and using technology. So what is this example all about? Well, the example starts by asking us to consider the following sequence defined by a sub n equal 2n plus uh, equals n over 2n plus 1. And it's corresponding series that we're providing to you, which is the summation of n over 2n plus 1. We're going to graph each of these on their calculator, and we're going to find both of their limits. And we're going to do that very visually. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this page. And so therefore, all of these wonderful instructions are going to be lost. But if you're following along at home, you still have these on your paper. And you can still uh, replicate these steps while you're hopefully using your graphing calculator. So let's switch over to our TI Inspire and move my ugly face out of the way. And so what we are going to do is we are going to uh, make a new document. You're going to actually be working in a document here. And that new document is going to be one that contains a list and um, spreadsheet page. Now, that's going to be the case when we get to our series. And it's probably best that if we look at graphing the sequence first. Now, when you graph the sequence, what we could do is just simply use a graph page. And so I'm going to go ahead and do that and stay within a document. And so we are on our graph page. And the thing is, is that this particular graphing page is of no good to us because it's a rectangular function. So we're going to go into our graph entry and choose option 7, sequence, which has a further sub option of sequence. And that's the one that we want to use. I very rarely ever use custom. Now what we're going to do is enter our a n expression inside of this u1 of n. And if you recall, that a n expression, if you don't have the sheet in front of you, was n over 2n plus 1. Now the cool thing is, is you can leave the other fields blank. We don't have an initial term that's not following this pattern. Um, I'm going to say that 99 terms is probably plenty. And of course, we want our step size to be 1. So when we do that, there we go. That would be our sequence. Now, of course, our window isn't the best for this, so we could play around with that. And it doesn't really matter what you use per se, but I have a window that I know works pretty well. So I tell you what, we'll do this the window zoom way. So we can go into our window settings. And just for kicks, let's just change um, x min to negative 1. That way we can see the nice y-axis. And how about we go up as high as, say, 30? And I'll use a scale of 1. That's pretty tight, but that should work. And then for the y's, um, I know that I want to go up as high as 0.5. So how about I go from negative 0.1 up to 0.5, and we'll just choose a nice window size of 0.05. A lot of those are very, very subjective. So basically, if I do that, we can see a little bit more what's going on. If I think that this is not to my liking, I can always click on any white space and drag this around to maybe get my point centered. But in any event, these are going to be those locations of those points. And it's very likely that you might be able to make a conjecture about the limit. Of course, I don't have my axes labeled, and sometimes um, um, that's a problem, but we'll worry about that here in just a little bit. For now, we're going to keep that as is, and I want to get into the series now. So to graph the series, what I'm going to do is make another page. And so I want to hit Control Doc, which adds a page, and this time we're going to use our list and spreadsheet. In the top row, what we're going to do is we're going to populate that with some very important pieces of our series. And I want to use n for the 
A row and or the A column, and you want to make sure that you type that in the very top row. And then I want to populate rows 1 through 10 with the numbers 1 through 10. Now we could go farther, and we could also do this a little faster. <laughs> There's a way that you can automatically have 1 through 10 show up. But if I'm only going to worry about 10 numbers, I'm good with just that. Okay. Next, we're going to go ahead and go to row B. And what I want to type in here is sequence of, say, A. So I'll just say S-E-Q-A. Now, it's very important. I can't just say C-S-E-Q because that's something that the calculator understands. It's not until I add that A that I can get by using that as a variable string. All right, so I have sequence A. Now what we're going to do is in the second row, that's the row that has the equation, what we are going to do is enter the expression for the sequence that we wish to sum. Well, if you remember, that sequence was a fraction, and it was n over 2n plus 1. Now when you hit Enter, you're going to get this weird pop-up. And you're always going to want to choose the same results. Let's choose all variable references. Basically, that means we're going to focus on what the value of n is in that first column and just use the input there to create the output here. And then we'll hit OK. And then, boom, those are the results. One third, two fifths, three sevenths. Now, it turns out, if I go back to page 1-1, one, one, those should be these values, the one-third. Now, of course, I don't have a scale here. And if, if that's bothersome, I could easily make that happen. Let's, let's see if we can make that happen. Let's play around with this. Let's have some fun with this. Let's change this window to be a little bit different. This 1 over 120 might be a little bit too precise. Let's go 0.1. That's 1 over 10. Okay. Now. These other scales here, um, I have this strange uh, uh, propensity for the calculator to want to express these fractions. I don't like that. So let's see if we can change that. So to fix that, depending on what mode your calculator is in, it's possible that you might need to go to settings. And it just so happened in my document settings, I had my calculation mode set to exact. That's going to give me these fractions all the time, and I really don't want that. I could go to approximate, or I could maybe go to auto, which sometimes uses what it feels is the best uh, approach. So let's see if auto makes a difference. And it turns out I do get at least a nice decimal up there. So let me see if I can add more of these uh, decimal values in here. So I can hit Menu, Actions, and I want to change my attributes. And then if I grab this y-axis or the x-axis and move down to the third option, I can choose multiple labels. Now the problem is, is I'm not seeing my labels like I would like to. And that probably means that I need to adjust my window size, or maybe it would be okay if this thing here wasn't a fraction. So I could return back to settings, and we'll go home and settings. And I'm going to choose document settings. I'm going to change this temporarily to approximate. I want decimals everywhere. Let's see if that made a difference. And it turns out that it did although I'm still not seeing all of those values, and it's very likely that I might need to close my window down to a different size. All right, now to do that, um, again, it might just require some experimentation. I'm going to go into Window Settings here, and let's make this X not go so big. How about we just take it up to maybe 12? And for the Y, I think that should be okay. And boom. There we have it. Like I said, you just have to make sure that you're not using a ton of numbers that won't fit together on the screen. And I often find that I have to experiment with that. Now I can hit Escape to get out of this attribute mode. All right, let's go back to page 1.2. We see that these values were 0.3 repeating, 0.4. If I go back here, 
I say 0.3 repeating, 0.4. I think we are right on target. All right, let's continue with our page one, two now. So in the C column, this is where the magic happens. I want you to type part sum, which is short for partial sum. And then in cell C1, which is right down here, let's enter the same value that we displayed in cell B1, which happens to be the 0.3333, right? So I'll just enter it. I could enter one third if I wanted to, or if I type a few threes, that's probably going to give me the accuracy that I want. Now in cell two, let's enter C1 plus B2. Now, do I want to put the equal sign with that? Well, it is a formula, so you need that. We're going to take what we had in C1, and we're going to add what's going on in cell B2. So you see what's happening here. We're essentially adding these two things together, which was going to make our second partial sum, S2. Once I do that, I get the result 0.7333. And remember, I'm in exact or in proximate mode. Now, at this point, we can just move our cursor to the bottom right corner of cell C2, like right there. It should change to a plus. You should be able to click on that with your click pad, and you can drag this down. And if all goes well, you can enter as many columns or rows as you want. I think I'm just going to stop there at 10. And then hit Enter. Oh, let's try that again. <laughs> I think that uh, I didn't drag it very well. Let's try this again. What I'm doing is I'm just going to drag a little bit of it at a time just to make sure that it shows up. But on your calculator, it should let you drag down. If it doesn't, just do what I did. <laughs> okay. Hey, you never know what's going to happen with this. All right. Here we go. Now, oh, I'd like to graph this, right? So now let's go ahead and add another page. Make this a graphing page. And on this graphing page, what we're going to do is we're going to select menu and I'm going to select the graph entry. And this time I want a scatter plot. So we're going to choose that. We get this weird pop up. After the X, we're going to type in N because that's the first column. That's the, the number of terms that we have. And then after the Y, you might think about what do you want here? Now, well, what we want is the partial sum, right? It's like we skip that B column because we needed that to compute our partial sum. But if we use part sum here, we should have what we want. Now, granted, we're going to have something that really needs adjusted from a screen perspective, but at least you can see that we have this partial sum being depicted. And yes, we could extend this more if I went back into this and added, say, a few more of these. Notice how the B column is very dynamic, and we could just go and see that dynamicness play here. And if I go back to 1-3, those points showed up. Oh, it looks like I missed one. Did I did I skip something? Yep. Don't ever put 13 in. It's unlucky, right? Well, you'd think I did that on purpose, but you know what? You could put 13 in. However, that's going to cause a bit of a problem because you'll notice that this column here is dependent upon the order of these being intact. So we're probably only accurate up to the 12. Okay, hopefully that makes a little bit of sense and you're able to figure that you can graph the partial sum, which I did on page three, and you can graph the nth term expression. Now, as far as limits are concerned, if you just look at this graphically, this is the a n expression, it looks like the limit is going to approach one half. Well, let's see if that's really the case, because if I was going to go back to this and take this limit, as n approaches infinity of n over 2n plus 1, lo and behold, the answer is 1 half. And then finally, if we do the same thing for the limit of the partial sum, which I'm going to ask that we just rely heavily on our graph, 
hopefully we see that this thing is moving up and up and up and up and up. It doesn't seem to be bounded. And I think we're going to approach infinity. And that's exactly what's happening. Value of infinity. So that means is we can't really find any kind of ending finite value that our partial sums will add up to. Anyway, I hope this helps. We'll see you next time.